one heck of a lot is going on here and it doesn't appear to be over. Have Everton sacked the board? Is this a win for the fans or is it a win for intimidation? Because many of these fans wanted this lot gone. I think it's a, uh, it's a combination of a variety of events. You can argue that given the state of the circumstances surrounding Everton's financial landscape, that they are complicit in allowing Mashiri to behave in a certain way, albeit it's very, very difficult to tell a billionaire what to do with his own money or Usmanov's money or whoever's money it is. Um, and so you're in a situation where, you know, the board are, are advising somebody that perhaps doesn't want to be advised. There is an element of the fact that they, they, they took it upon themselves to remove themselves from the stadium and didn't front it out. And some would say that's because they were really, really in a very difficult position and there was real jeopardy. I struggle with that, but I've also spoken to uh, certainly Bill about the nature of some of the experiences that he was having. Um, what and, were those? Well, just the, the nature of the vitrol and the information that were being given by security companies about the, the real jeopardy they were going to put themselves in the way of. I find that challenging because whilst there may be an argument that there's there's not a good enough being job being done in certain quarters, I don't think it would have been through lack of endeavour. I don't think it would be through without the prism of a very difficult owner to work alongside. And I certainly don't think it was because they wanted to, to, to find Everton in a very difficult position. But like football clubs always have, there is this sense of expectation, balanced with a sense of entitlement, balanced with a culture at this moment in time that seems a little bit off with what people can expect to behave and say and do and maybe that's the social media uh, part of the world that's now driving people into a frenzy of what they think they can say and they take it into the real life or maybe it's post-COVID reactions to people having a very angry attitude towards society but it's ramped up a notch do I think they should have changed it? I think it's run its course I think you've reached the point where it would be degrees of loss. It's a zero-sum game for these guys. They were never going to get back with a, with a group of fans, however big or small that group of fans were. And it seemed to be not a smaller amount, not, not a facivorous minority. It was moving towards, balancing up towards a significant proportion of the fan base. But would you have done what Mashiri appears to have done? Would you have nudged them out? Um, would you have buckled if I, to the if, pressure if I thought, that some of these extreme fans have gone to? If I thought that they weren't doing the job that they should have done, then I would have taken them out, not because of the fans, in spite of the fans, because I would have done it myself. But in this instance, I, and then people are going to suggest that because I'm friendly with Bill Kenwright, I'm constantly providing a veneer for Bill Kenwright. This is a preposterous observation that, that, that Mashiri is under the control of the board. Now, what the argument is fair enough to say is if Mashiri has appointed this board or allowed this board to continue in, in his in his image or under his direction to some extent or or running the football club on a day-to-day -day basis that he is culpable for their shortcomings I emphatically and nothing is going to change my mind I don't care how many rabid Everton fans want to scream at me that Mashiri is the guy that pushes the button that pulls the trigger that makes the decisions that has allowed people to buy players for 50 million quid when they're not worth it that's gone after people like Ancelotti when they've been the wrong fit that's made the wrong decisions that has been Mashiri and there's nothing that anyone will say to me that will change me from that point of view now going towards a situation with Everton you cannot allow a football club of this magnitude to consistently be flailing in the wind like it's been they've got away from relegation twice now yeah. and there won't be a third time yeah. if they keep on with, and they, they've, they've kind of half fixed it because Deitch will change the direction yes. he won't put yeah. Everton back to anything vaguely resembling where they think they should be but I think he'll take them away from the fumes and the abyss Right. The, the departing director, Simon, I mean, it's sad. We understand this morning, they are, they, they are, the mood is sad yeah. amongst the ones who have gone. Um, and the ones who have gone, Chief Exec, Denise Barrett-Baxendale, Chief Finance and Strategy Officer Grant Ingalls and Graham Sharp, former player, non-executive director. We've all been fully committed during our time here. We've worked tirelessly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and they finish off with, and I, I have no reason to doubt this, we wish the club, we have loved to serve, to, to serve, have every success in the future. So they go very much, but that's life, very Jim. much with that, heavy hearts. But that's life, Jim. That's life. If we look at the last three years of Everton, could we honestly, with all impartiality, and I do have a tad, tad of bias because I'm fond of Bill, but do, with, all, with all degrees of honesty, can we say that this is a win for any of them? Can so, we say, so is this a win for the fans who you say don't have all the power? No, well, they I, clearly I, I, don't do. th I don't think it's a win for anybody. I think it's there's an element of mob rule about this. But also, if you just, if you take that part out of it and say, well, 
is it is it been a good landscape? Have they been doing a wonderful job? Should they have worked for Mashiri? If Mashiri, if I was working for Mashiri, but he was only doing what they were telling, what he was telling them then, to do. Then, then, if you're working for somebody that is ultimately bringing you outcomes that you know to be flawed, that you know are steeped in bad decision making, then you don't work for that person. You say, you know what, you run this football club the way you want to run it because we don't so that's where they come into the territory of being complicit in the bad decision making processes now that might be because they need the economics of the job it might be because they feel so committed and indexed to the football club and all of them by the way are thoroughly decent people of course right? and are not meriting the kind of treatment that the mob rule group of fans think they're able to and meet they've out they've been brought up with a club but they haven't... It's they, in, uh, Everton is ingrained blood in letting, Graham Sharp's blood. Bloodletting blood. comes when things are failing. It's a fact of life, right? And ultimately, Everton is a basket case right now, and it needs to be revived. It was close to being buried. It's been exhumed, right? And it needs to get itself together. Now, whether that's the change of ownership, whether it's a restructuring of a board to make sure that the investment of a new stadium is put in place, or whether it's people just need a thorough kick up the backside and a reorganising, a restructuring of that football club to make sure that it's fit for purpose. Because honestly, with all due respect to those that have been there, and there's always nuance and context, they, they kind of needed to do a bit better. They kind of need... And the Carlo Ancelotti thing, well, the fact he's suing the football club, whenever, you've, whenever you hire managers, there's often a dispute when you fire them. And there's always this perspective about what they think they're entitled to. Every football manager that I fired got parked up in the long grass until they had their minds concentrated about what they were going to get paid as their compensation. Did you get sued by any of them? No. I'm um, close to it. Um, and I had clever people like Peter, because I always built clauses into my contracts that were mitigation. So when I gave someone a contract and I fired them, I built in a mitigation, which means if you go and work for someone else, you don't get double paid. So I'll pay the difference between what you got somewhere else. Peter Taylor tried to be clever by going and get a job at Stevenage Borough for a fraction of the salary that he would have been on, so I'd have had to pay the difference. And we didn't we didn't have that. We said, basically, your market worth is not 60 grand a year mm. at Stevenage Borough. It's closer to the half a million that I'm paying you. So I played hardball with it, but I think Ancelotti walked out, didn't he? So I'm not entirely yeah. sure what case he's got. It was an opportunity he couldn't say no to. It may be points bonuses, it may be positional bonuses. but it's Took an his son with him. But it's an unseemly position and it's easily resolvable because Mashiri got the ability to pay him. So it's it's not a case of they can't. They've obviously got a legitimate dispute. Yeah, but this is a problem that, that, it that they find themselves in. It happens. Mashiri's got the ability to pay anybody, to pay other clubs yeah. massive, massive amounts of money for and players has, that you, you rightly has, say, Simon... Are, are way, way yeah. priced out the market. But then again, you know, that's... Overpriced. Where, but yeah, it's easy for me to say, right, because I'm not the person in the room, but I find it difficult to superimpose myself into a conversation with someone like Mashiri in some parallel universe where I was working with him, where someone is absolutely and categorically the wrong fit for the football club, like Rafa Benitez, and somebody is absolutely the wrong price for a player, that I would sit there and say, I tell you what, Farhead, I'm just going to go along with that because I'm one of your employees. But I'm a different animal. I'm cut from a different cloth. You know, the economics of it are not so so prevalent for me, and maybe they are for those guys, but I don't think they are. I would simply be not having it. Wait, but, will, Bill but have it? will Bill have it? No, I mean, Bill is the one they want out, isn't uh, isn't he? Bill is the one that they Do all blame. Do you expect him to go today? I would expect Bill to depart, not because I want him to, and not because I think he should, but because I think it's ultimately it's reached the point where... They blame, they blame Bill. They blame Bill for the lack of finances in the football club, the lack of investment, the decisions that he's made over the years. Um, and it's like Levy, isn't it? People are going to say, I naturally spring to the defence of owners because it's in my blood to think that way. No, I just want fairness. I just want a fairness in the conversation. And there's nothing wrong in that, Simon. If Ken Wright departs today, and if he does, we'll bring it to you first and fastest in talk sport because we're across it. How would you sum up his legacy of 19 years if that's set to end today as chairman? I think, chairman, I, think he's, I think he's done. A, I think Bill Kenwright has done a lot more right for Everton than he's ever done wrong for it. There are in everybody's um, resume, there'll be missteps. In everybody's resume, there'll be opportunities they could have taken. Bill hasn't got the money that others have got individually, so he's done deals and created opportunities. And yes, there will have been missed opportunities. Yes, there'll be accusations that be levied at Bill's door that certain people that he brought into the business at certain times or certain opportunities that he missed that he could have taken because he didn't want to do things in a certain way. But on the whole, on the bulk of it, I think Everton have been better off for Bill Kenwright than they could have been with other people there. And they'll blame him for Mashiri coming through the door. Because I've I got I to gotta tell I don't care about the popularity contest. I think Mashiri is the biggest clown billionaire in football that I've ever clapped eyes upon. And that's coming up behind Todd Bowley right now. But Bowley A will clown correct him. billionaire? Well, look at the state of Everton. 
Look at the state of it. It's not. I'm not trying to gain points with the Antonio. I'm Antonio's looking at now. the state of it. It's the, not all dreadful. The club, the club, I mean, the club they're fi- still in the Premier the League. The club's finished full, full, and that's by the skin of their teeth. There's a phenomenal it's, new stadium being built. It's finished full from bottom, twice in two seasons. It's They've been, got a good manager it's been in there sanctioned now. within an inch of its life. It's under special measures from the Premier League. It can't control its own destiny, right? Because it needs to b- sell players to buy players. It's put itself, and it's now got a query about whose money's funding it. I mean, there's a whole yeah, raft. Manche- Manchester City have got 115 charges facing them. No, no, nobody's getting. But they ain't sitting at the bottom of the league, are they? About that. They're not looking at. They're not looking about getting relegated. But they're a Ma- Premier League club. But Manchester City and a new stadium's being and, built, and, and, and they've a good manager. And, and that's fine. A new city, a, a new stadium is being built, um, and ultimately the money's being borrowed to build it. Let me ask you this: And they've been that straight. close to dropping out of the Champions. So I don't think. I don't think even even in a conversation where we're trying to create devil's advocacy in this conversation, you know as well as I do, you cannot make a case for Everton. Doing what they couldn't oh, should Simon, have been doing this, for the last four or five years. I agree with you. The success of man- the succession of managers and bad managers and and poor decisions on his part uh, are there for everybody to see. Would you have ever been forced out by mob rule at any time? I don't think so. But you can never you can never know what you would do depending upon the the level of vitriol. But I would I don't I had my challenges at Palace at times. And I had I misstepped at certain times, but I fronted it. So they didn't get the opportunity to build up a narrative. I fronted it. I didn't duck it. When I made a mistake, when I was doing a deal with Paul Kemsey on the stadium, and I and I said to the fans I'd bought the stadium, it was me and Kemsey that had done a deal. I had to pay Kemsey a million quid to get out of the deal I'd done, and I fronted it. And I got the fans making observations about me, but I fronted it. So you take it away from them. Yeah. And if they know that you're coming from a position of a, a, fundamentally the best interest of the football club and a bit of integrity, you can diffuse a proportion of those that want to have the out, out, outlook and attitude that some of the Everton fans have got. Mm. But it's easy for me to say. It's easy for me to say. I'm not sat there being told by... I mean, I remember going to, to play Charlton away and I was told by security firms not to go to that game because of the nature of the relationship. And it was very hairy. And one of the security guards that was looking after me did get stabbed. And there were situations where bottles were thrown at me and they wanted to keep me inside the stadium after the game. Um, but well, I still went. But you're still right I to st- go. In your own mind, oh, you're still know. right I to mean, go. I mean, that was me. That was then. Maybe you look back and think to yourself, maybe that wasn't the wisest thing to do. But no, I don't, I I don't com- like the idea. I you commend just, you for you going, bow Simon. to it, certain people's it, attitudes. It was absolutely the right decision to go because it was a brave decision you stood up to what you were getting fairness was what you were after fairness yeah I think so we often hear it we often hear it when the crowds get going around the country I've heard it at a number of clubs sack the board sack the board sack the board Everton appear to have done that Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.